Hello, and welcome to uh, this collection of four videos which is going to be talking about music creation from the ground up. So the aim of these sessions really is to give you some skills and confidence to go out and about and you know create your music. Um, whether that's on acoustic instruments or synth synthetic instruments or software instruments, we'll look at both of those options over the next four sessions. Um, we'll look at how to release your song into the wild once it's made, how to write that song a little bit, um, and all the kind of stuff in between. So, you know, we've got four roughly 45, 50 minute long sessions. Um, if you have any questions, f you please feel free to get in touch with the NIMAS team and that they'll be able to send them over to me about anything that we cover. Um, we'll be looking at a piece of software called Ableton to kind of record into, which is a DAW, a Digital Audio Workstation. So um, you can get Ableton Live, um, Ableton Lite, excuse me, and that's a free, free download from the Ableton website um, if you want to follow along and you can kind of do that and all that kind of thing um, with pretty much any laptop as long as it's not too old, um, but most laptops will be fine, whether it's PC or Mac which is pretty exciting. Um, so there's kind of four main aims for the four week, uh, four sessions that we've got. Um, we're going to look at how to record with microphones. We're going to look at using MIDI instruments within your song to kind of thicken out the texture because not everybody owns an entire orchestra, of course. Um, and we're going to look at mixing fundamentals, um, you know, taking our song that might have you know several different tracks in different instruments how do we mix all of those elements together and make it sound good and then we'll look at finally how to release your song out there master it um, and then release it and we'll talk about what mastering is as well which sometimes is described as a bit of a dark art but it definitely isn't always um, so we'll kick straight in uh, with this first session um, and we're going to be looking at how to record microphones and how to get your song kind of sounding as good as possible before we even begin um and let's start with that so songwriting itself you know has quite a lot of uh not stigmas attached to it but there's, cer there's certain expectations isn't there and i think the more you do it the more you will relax into your own method of writing songs um if you ask any bunch of songwriters there won't be a conclusive way or approach um, but often they will have different methods that have worked for them. Um, so we can kind of have a little think about some of that. Some people would like, you know, would suggest starting with a nice chord progression um, and, you know, playing a guitar and coming up with some chords that work well together. And then they might kind of think about a melody that works over the top of that. And then they might put some words to the melody. And then that's one approach. You might start with the melody and then have some words and then eventually think about what chords could go in. Sometimes you might even think about chords. You might think just about a bass line um, and start with that even. Or, you know, there's lots of music which is very riff based. So you might just have a particular melody that sounds good, a riff. And you might add another riff and then you might think, oh, I need a, a bass riff. And you'll be thinking about kind of adding all those together. And then you'll, you know, some of the parts and then put some words over the top of it, maybe. Other people, again, might just start with the words and, you know, take those words that you've written, which may or may not rhyme. It doesn't really matter at this stage. You can kind of think about those words and improvise along to those words. And you might, you know, want to get into the habit of prep playing and improvising and then seeing what sounds good and recording all of that improvisation, listening back to it, you know, the next day even when it's not so fresh. Um, one of the difficulties often is being able to separate um, kind of your analytical brain and your kind of instinctive improvising brain. Um, so often it's quite good to kind of deliberately kind of put a divide between the two. Try not, you know, you can be analysing what you're playing as you're playing it. And obviously there is a place for that. You know, that is deliberate practice um, and that is a good way of improving on your instrument and you know, being critical of what you're writing at the same time, and it, it can be useful. But uh, if you've never tried just winging it and improvising and, and you know, going with whatever you're hearing, and not without criticisms, and then leaving it and coming back to it, you might be surprised um, how effective that can be sometimes. So that's um, a little thing I would suggest you try. Um, the other 
main approach I guess you could think about doing is writing with different instruments in mind. Um, I'm a drummer and percussionist mainly, but I, I did learn piano and well do play piano um, as a kind of songwriting tool ma mainly. And if ever there's a group karaoke that demands somebody knock out the chords for something. Um, but, you know, if I ever feel like I'm in a bit of a creative rut, I might pick up a guitar, which I do not play well and force myself to try and come up with some ideas on that and you know the limitation of an instrument that's not familiar can often be the thing that really inspires you the most and oftentimes it was presented to me that limitations were um the way to kind of breed creativity in a lot of ways so if you're writing something you might say okay well, i'm only going to limit myself to these six notes or five notes or three notes and how creative can you be with three notes you know and y it, it's it's an interesting um avenue to go down that that kind of limitation idea um so experimenting what instrument you're writing on can often be um quite a fruitful endeavor as well i should probably take a little moment to introduce who i am and why you should even be listening to me in the first place so my name is josh savage um i'm a drummer percussionist based in manchester um, I went to the RNCM and did my degree there in jazz percussion. Um, I play and perform around Manchester and the UK and uh, the globe occasionally. Um, and alongside all my performing career, uh, I'm very involved with um, being a producer and uh, a co-director of a company called A&J um, with Andrew Jones. And we write music for TV and film and uh, the radio and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a very I'm very pleased with the kind of breadth of what my career is now um alongside all of that which obviously has various skills that I've had to learn to do um I love sharing what I'm doing with people and I run um co-run a music production um a club of sorts um for some young carers in Altrincham um, and also do some live streaming work with a company called You Can Play. And I'm actually in the You Can Play studios right now recording this. Um, and so I do work with uh, them quite a lot as well. Um, so all of that kind of feeds into hopefully why I'm here today to hopefully uh, give you some information that you can kind of use and work through. Um, anywho, that's a little side note about who I am. Um, back to songwriting. So I'm, I'm at the piano. I've got I've set up a microphone already, but we're going to talk about how to do that as well in a moment. But let's just come up with an idea. One of the things I've written in my notes here is have a plan versus happy accidents being inspired. Well, there's no right answer to that question, which wasn't a question. But ultimately, you know, you can go into creating a song with a plan, with some lyrics ready, um, or with part of a plan even. And some people will go through the whole process without a plan and very much just embrace the process. You will go, you may be recording an instrument or um, a part for something you might be experimenting and you go, oh, actually now that's triggered my mind and that makes me think that we need this instrument or we need to do this thing. And, you know, you kind of have these dominoes that keep on falling. Um, in my experience, it depends on time, budget <laughs> and the people involved whether having a plan versus not having a plan works. Um, in most cases, it helps to have something of a plan, but to leave kind of a lot of space really around kind of schedules and um, what you're meant to be, you know, what you're meant to be doing um, to allow for that creative action and space, you know. So it might be that, you know, I have a band in and we're recording a song that they've already been playing and gigging with and they record the bit, the drums and the bass maybe first and they've done that and suddenly the guitarist will go oh actually we need to this oh, we've not done this but can we just try putting this on there and you know they'll put a different guitar line in and everyone will be really you know it's that essence of allowing that place um allowing that space for creative input um so you can do that for yourself is is the point i'm trying to make really that don't box yourself in too much if you hear something or feel something just go with it and you, you'll always end up learning something doesn't mean it has to be in the final product but it's always good to experiment so we're at the piano let's see what 
comes out. I've not prepared anything, which is interesting. But th th let's just see if we can get an idea down. Uh, maybe just a chord sequence to start with. That's quite nice, like an E minor seven vibe. Yeah, that's quite nice. So if I just play that a couple of times, just so we can get you start, this is what we're gonna stick with today, hopefully. fine isn't it so you can see that I'm already starting to experiment a little bit with the bass line um, with the left hand there and seeing kind of what's what's working what's not working and you know are we happy with what's coming out you know and uh, in short I am happy with what's coming out I, I quite like the kind of bouncy feeling so that's quite nice you know it may be that we use this for some of the rest of the projects but now we've got that let's think what could we add you know is, is are we hearing a melody at all or i'm just gonna move this microphone a little bit closer always leave enough space to maneuver microphones that's another key lesson obviously Okay, there we go. So we've got this chord progression. I don't know, that's quite nice. As like a melody, and then the second time. So then we go to that B sus chord. That seems to work. So we'll just try it one more time. And then it can kick off. So, you know, there's like two options there. I'm hearing kind of almost as well kind of a jazz, jazz kind of solo -y vibe over the top of this. Maybe some kind of like horn lines or something where it's like. So it's hard at the moment. I'm not sure what's going to be on vocals and what's going to be on like a horn line. Um, but that's part of the process. That's part of what we've got to deal with. Um, so we've got our idea for all intents and purposes. Anyway, I'm going to bring us a little bit back to the camera now. Um, we've got our idea. We all have ideas. Nothing. Um, well, maybe that's an unfair assumption. Maybe you're in a bit of a rut, but it's okay. You will get some ideas at some point. The important thing being, what are we going to do with those ideas? We've experimented with our chords. We've kind of looked for opportunities where we can develop melodies and themes and make it nice and interesting. Um, we've thought about what instruments we want to play it on. And we've decided that we're going to record piano. So what does that mean? Well, it means a few different things. It means we need to have a way of recording the sound from the piano. Now, there are lots of ways of doing that. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a surface level look at it, but hopefully with enough detail that you feel able to have a go. Um, there are kind of two main ways that I'm going to suggest you do it today, um, which are really the only two ways in some ways. But um, you could record it with your phone, is that the first way? Um, the phone, 
uh, microphones in phones um, at the moment are particularly good. Um, you know, a lot of most iPhones have had pretty good microphones in for quite a while now. So if you use the voice memo app on a iPhone and record the piano sounds and the chords that you want to do, record it to a metronome would be good because that will help us later when we edit our audio um, in Ableton. Um, but and you know you can record with um, a metronome app that's on uh, uh, your phone or an iPad or something or a computer or anything another device probably um, and you can record with that in headphones so it doesn't come out of the speakers because otherwise you'll capture the piano and the metronome sound we don't want the metronome sound in our audio from the piano um, and then you will be able to play along to the metronome stay in time and we'll have a jolly good time later on. So that's one way of doing it. That's a really kind of easy, hopefully more budget focused way of doing it. Most people now will have a mobile phone that is able to record audio onto it in that way. And uh, same with Android phones, there will always be kind of a voice memo or voice recorder app available. Um, the other way, um, which requires a little bit more technology, but you know, stuff that most people, well, people who are interested in this kind of thing will probably have, which is an audio interface. So you'll need an audio interface, and this often w you can get different sizes, but usually the smallest ones have two inputs. So that can kind of have two microphones kind of going into it. Um, you'll need a microphone, and there are different types of microphone which we'll come on to, but we'll, you need a microphone, an XLR cable more, most often, which will plug from the microphone into the audio interface. And then the audio interface will go into your laptop or computer and this or even iPad actually now. But um, th that will allow you to kind of get the sound from the microphone into your computer. And we'll talk a little bit how to set that up in Ableton in a second. Just to jump back to microphones, though, for just one second. What I'm recording onto here is a Shure microphone, SM7B, it's called. Um, it's a really good uh, dynamic microphone. Um, and you know dynamic microphones are particularly good for um, for voices um, where you know there might be other noises around. They're quite di usually quite directional microphones. You'll see microphones being used dy dynamic microphones being used on snare drums and lots well lots of different drums actually um, on guitar amps, uh, bass amps. In a lot of live settings, you'll see dynamic microphones being used a lot. Um, and, you know, this is because they offer that kind of really direct directional uh, capture. So they won't pick up things. This microphone, for instance, won't pick up sounds that are behind it. It will only pick up sounds that are this way, really. Um, and it's quite directional in that way. Um, so that's dynamic microphone. So if you have um, an SM7, oh, sorry, sorry, an SM57 or uh, SM58 is another one which are really common. You'll definitely, if you Google either of those, you'll definitely recognize them. Um, another type of microphone, you know, two, two other main ones, um, is a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is usually a lot more sensitive than a dynamic, or it can be. Um, it captures more often a wider um, uh, directional field, I guess, um, but you can kind of capture kind of uh, spaces in often in like a figure of eight depending on the microphone so that captures from like both sides um you can also get them so they capture kind of uh, omnidirectional so it's everywhere which is pretty cool as well um you'll see condenser microphones being used on vocals um in the studio a lot um because they offer really really high quality and um you know a cool kind of open sound uh, the reason I'm hesitant on kind of some of these descriptions is because all of these microphones th are so different um, in the sense that like you can get dynamic microphones that sound really open um, and you can get condenser microphones that sound a bit more closed, you know. So it's not that any one is immediately better for everything. It's all to do with just for a particular purpose. Um, and as you kind of embark on this journey, you will... Um, be able to kind of research the different types and see if they'll be a good fit and hear if they're a good fit. There's lots of YouTube channels, for instance, which compare microphones. So you can kind of go on and someone who's got both will record both with their voice and you can just listen to the difference, which is great. Um, 
So condensed microphones, yeah, also for overhead on overhead microphones on drum kits, which capture the sound of the entire drum kit. They're really good for that. And also you'll see them uh, for, and, and we use them for capturing um, big room sound. So if we're live streaming an event, which maybe there's a choir performing, for instance, we might have two uh, overhead microphones, condenser microphones, uh, positioned um, just in front of the choir and kind of, you know, nicely positioned and then you get this really nice capture of the sound as if you're kind of in the room um, and you can do a thing called panning which is where you put one of the microphones all the way in the left ear and one of the microphones all the way in the right ear and together it makes it feel like you can hear things that are on the left uh, on the left and that you can see on the right uh, come out of your right ear so that's a really really cool thing as well so condensers are really good for that and finally you will get um, ribbon microphones so ribbon microphones you might be a bit less likely to come across in the early days of your career um, of your kind of song making career but that's okay um, eventually you may well come across them and they are really really good and characterful microphones often um, again they're a bit more uh, akin to the condensers I guess and uh, the sound moves across uh, the module um, and this is what I've got here actually is a rhythm mic from a brand called uh, Sontronics um, a fantastic UK based microphone manufacturer that all their microphones come with I think it's a lifetime warranty which is amazing um, and yes yeah, so I've borrowing this one from you can play where you can get uh, Sontronics microphones and they've got uh, this rhythm microphone and all sorts of other stuff as well but um, a rhythm microphone often has like a bit of character like I say so it'll be um, it will not alter the sound but it will kind of have um, it will sound different compared to other microphones and like I say all these microphones sound very different but rhythm microphones you'll often see on kind of guitar amps if done carefully because it's quite easy to damage a rhythm microphone if you put too much loud sound next to it um, but rhythm microphones have been used all over the years for you know Motown era particularly for you know just great sounding uh, tracks um, so there are three different types of microphones um, have a little bit of research there once you've chosen your microphone of course um, and you know I've chosen this ribbon microphone for this uh, piano today it's all about the positioning um, and wh when I say that, I mean literally where are you putting the microphone to get the best sound um, and there's th a really easy way to do this um, and that is to kind of if you're able have a friend um, play the instrument or whatever that you're going to be capturing and then go and put your head where that microphone will be does it sound good if it does put it there absolutely i mean it's it's all about does it sound good does the sound sound good and if it does you're on for a winner honestly it's really not uh, rocket science in that sense what i would say is um it's oh excuse me What I would say, what I would say is, it's important to. Uh, there is a lot. There is something. There is a really easy way to go about and check if your positioning for your microphone is good and that is to literally have a friend if possible to go and play the instrument that you're going to be recording and then move literally move your head and your ears to where you think the microphone might be wanting to go and f see if you can find it somewhere where it sounds really good it does it sound really good put your microphone there and honestly you, that is kind of the the secret sauce if you like that and uh, there is a little bit more to it than that sometimes with vocal microphones you don't want to get too close to the microphone otherwise it gets very bassy and boomy and it sounds like you're inside a box or inside someone's head even um, and so you want to kind of have a little um, bit of distance but these are all little tips and tricks that you'll find along the way um, the other thing I was oh yeah so do go and check out on the Shure website S H U R E you will be able to see that they've got a really good resource for where traditionally sounds good for different instruments so you can kind of go on there and there's a little crib sheet for uh, 
different microphones and where to put them for different instruments and it really does have a wide range from like accordion all the way down to kind of like um cellos that's not that far because it's a to c but um <laughs> instrument a xylophone there you go um and you can kind of see where it would be really really good to put microphones and you can kind of then have a pretty safe bet that you're gonna be getting it right so that's microphone placement and some microphones there just to kind of spur you on your way and to be googling the right kinds of things i do think with all of this kind of stuff this uh, where i found it most useful to learn about microphones and interfaces and all this kind of thing it's just having a few key terms to kind of google and watch a couple of youtube videos on and then you're away so if if anything that's what i'm trying to give you here is a little kind of springboard for that interest um good fantastic so we are now on to we've we've got chosen our microphone excuse me we've chosen our microphone we've plugged it into our interface we have changed the gain, which we've not talked about, but that basically means adjusting the sensitivity of the microphone, the the the, um, the strength of the signal from the microphone to the interface, so that when we go into our DAW in a second, it, the signal is nice and strong. If it's not very strong, we have to turn it up, and usually we have to turn it up within the DAW, and if we do that, we can sometimes end up with unnecessary noise, which is kind of when it should be silent, we get some kind of buzzing or hissing sounds. So we want to make sure we're kind of recording at a healthy level. So the gain is kind of nice and kind of quite high, um, and but not distorting. If we go too high and then we play too loudly, we get a distorted sound, which sounds even worse. So we don't want that, but we want to make sure it's a nice strong signal um, so that we can get the cleanest recording possible. Um, and to do that, of course, we need to then go into our DAW. So, with any luck, you should be able to see on my screen um, the uh, project I've got here, which is in Ableton Live. So, yours might look slightly different. It might look slightly different colours, potentially, depending um, which version you have in front of you. But if you have Ableton Lite, you will hopefully recognize the layout somewhat. Now, if you don't recognize the layout, it could be that you're in this view. And what I'm doing here is I'm pressing the tab key and then that changes the view from, I think it's session view to arrangement view. And we're gonna be working in arrangement view for today, which is this one here. And what this basically is showing us is we've got a timeline from starting from number one here and these are like our bars or measures. So bar one and then five and then nine, 13, whatever, up in four bar increments. And it's kind of going from right to left. So if I was to just press play, you can see that's kind of just going across there. I'm just gonna turn this down a smidge. Um, but you can see it's um, moving across uh, in a, a left to right fashion as if you were reading it. So I've just zoomed in a little bit there and we're now gonna, we're gonna record, I always leave a couple of bars at the beginning just for nothing, just uh, in case we need a count in later or if we want to add a little introduction, it's just a bit easier to kind of click from. So um, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, we're in Ableton. What you will need to do is you'll need to go to your preferences, which is just up here. And I've got, this is the name of my interface here. So um, audio input device, uh, universal audio Thunderbolt. So that's me. So I've already selected that and I've already selected that it's my output device as well. So these two things need to be correct. Um, they need to be your audio interface for your input device and your output device needs to be wherever you're plugging your headphones in. Now, if you can do that through your audio interface, I would recommend doing that because this will help with latency, which is how long the signal takes to get through in and out of your computer and back out to your ears. And often it's easier to adjust when it's all going through one piece of equipment, basically. Um, if you can't, however, then do change that to wherever your headphones are plugged into. So it could be your speakers even, or it could be the headphone jack or whatever. Um, for me, it's all going through my audio interface so I've set that up you may also need to go into your input configuration and select whatever inputs you have plugged your microphone or microphones into so for me I know that I've got the microphone that I'm speaking into in 
uh, channel number one. And then cha channel number two, I have the ribbon microphone, which I'm using to record. Um, good. You could also check that the output configuration is right here. And I know that on my audio interface, the five to six, five and six is where it's going um, for me to be able to hear it through my headphones and for to be able to record it for this video as well. So I've selected five and six there. And you can see the output for those settings down here on the master channel. And this top one is for your Q and the bottom one is for your output. So there, the, once you've got all those settings working and you know, set up, you should be good to go. If you have any difficulties with that, the Ableton Live website is really good for um, troubleshooting and that kind of thing. So you can literally type in no sound, Ableton Light, and then your audio interfa interface, and it will almost definitely be the case that somebody has had the same issue. So, you know, the community is really, really good for um, helping people who have not who are u new to this as a thing um, audio production so do ask and you will receive um, fantastic so we've got that set up now in our, over on this right hand side it's slightly different to uh, Logic or GarageBand where usually you have your instruments on the left hand side but on Ableton you have them on your right hand side so on this bottom one here I've already helpfully no, uh, changed the name of that by pressing a command R, Apple R um, uh, to piano and that is number track number two so you can select that there if I was on number one that would be my voice five and six would be everything um, but two is just the piano so I've selected that I've armed the recording which is this red button here that means that the recording is armed it means when I press the record button at the top middle here when I press record that track will record from that microphone which is great. That's exactly what we want it to do. Um, so we'll give that a go in a second. We'll see if we can get our idea working. First of all, let's just make sure, because um, we're going to be recording to a click, um, uh, a metronome or a click, um, both uh, mean the same thing. Because um, we're going to be recording to a click, we need to make sure that the click is at the right speed. Now, uh, let's just see if we remember our tune. twice as fast as it. So it's about that speed. So dun, 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 dun. let's make sure that we're actually at that speed. I don't think we are. Okay, so we're really not. So if we have a quick look up to the top left of the screen now, you should be able to see uh our tempo so 120 currently that's a little bit too fast um and to the left of it we've got this tap button so if you click on that at the speed which is our new tempo it will automatically adjust which is pretty cool so uh, okay seems to be about 90 ish so I'm going to change that to a whole number. It's often useful to change it to a whole number rather than leaving it on like 89.3762 or whatever. Um, it will make your life a little bit easier later if we need to share tracks to other people to work on, for instance. If you want somebody to record the bass to a track that you've worked on, it's really useful if you send them what you've already recorded to tell them what the um, BPM is. Um, and that's the way to do that and keep it simple is to have a whole number. So 90 is good. Let's just hear that again. That feels pretty good to me. So let's give it a go. We're going to get the click going. It doesn't really matter. We've got nothing else to record to yet. So this will be our first thing. So we can just let the click play, get used to the rhythm of it and then give it a go. You'll notice also just whilst we're here, Every time I hover over a button, I get this useful thing down here, info view. Um, and so by pressing the question, it shows you at the bottom, right at the bottom, what the shortcut is. If you want to learn the shortcuts, which I would 100% recommend you do. But it also tells you what you're hovering over and what it does, the time signature, everything. It's amazing. Anyway, here we go. Um, this is the piano bit part, and I'm going to just twizzle around and play this in. Here we go. Oh, 
so a little bit of an error there, but that's okay. We've got this first bit that sounds good, I think. Yeah, and this ribbon microphone's got a nice kind of cloudy um, kind of color to it, which we can kind of uh, change if we want to a little bit later. But what I'm gonna do c currently is just click a bar before where you can see where we change here. And I have a feeling we might use this cr track again. And if that is the case, um, maybe we uh, w will leave the left hand out, the bass line, because we can save that for the actual, unless we mirror the bass maybe. Let's, we'll put it in for now, and then we can always deal with that problem later if we need to. This is kind of, you know, you're witnessing part of the process here is figuring out when to record certain things. And it's good to just have it down and we can kind of change it. But we'll do a version with and version without um, in a second. So let's just give this record and we'll see how we go. Two, three. I don't love that last bit. We'll do that one more time. One more time. That's good. That's the one. That feels good. Um, you'll see we're now we've recorded over our previous track, but that's okay because we can just drag them across like that. That should sound okay. And we can hear and check that it's in time with our click as well. It feels okay. And check without the click as well. Yeah, and that's going to be really nice with our bass line in as well. well. Let's just do a quick one. Right, we'll just make another track, uh, which is Apple T. Uh, shortcut wise and we'll just do another track and record a version of this with um, the I'm just going to turn this track off and by doing that it means it won't play in a second uh, we're going to do a version with the bass line as well but it's, it will do. <laughs> um, so you can just kind of jump in somewhere there. That feels good. That feels okay. That's okay. So we've got two options there. So I'm going to name that one piano with bass line. Piano with left hand. Piano with left hand, a little bit more accurate. But who knows which one we'll use in the end. Um, that's... <laughs> What you're seeing then uh, in this little portion now is, oh God, why is it airs over this microphone? I don't know how that's happened. Um, what you're seeing though is the waveform. So if we dive into our original piano track here, what you can see, uh, I'm a little bit far away really, but you can see the literal representation of sound as it moves through the air on the screen. Um, and each of these is obviously one of our chords, which is quite cool. Um, it also means that we can kind of do some interesting things with this sound. Um, and we can kind of, excuse me, if we just have a little look here. It also means we can do um, some basic actions to this sound, which will, is what we'll start the next session um, with. Um, which, hmm. is that what we'll start the next session? Yeah, no. So, so one of the things you can do with, so what we're seeing now is a literal representation of the sound as it moves through the air into your ears. And, you know, in the same way that you might edit a Word document, we can also edit this. Um, and this is useful, um, as you'll see in the next video, as we look at MIDI um, and what MIDI is. 
we can chop stuff up. So if we highlight a bit that we like, we can kind of press Apple C and we can just kind of copy and paste that wherever we like, you know, so that's really easy way there of copying and pasting something. We can cut it, um, we can kind of separate it by pressing Apple and E in uh, Ableton to do that. We can also do duplication, so if we want just the same chord twice, we can Apple D. So you see how that's now changed our chord sequence just by doing that. And it's really powerful. You know, there's so many options for us um, if we don't like what we've played, we can play it in a different way or we can edit it. And, you know, there's lots of benefits, uh, you know, for both of those in different contexts. It might be that you only have one day to record with this particular guitar or piano and you have a change of heart, you know, a week or two later and you still love the sound of the piano. You know, well, let's mess around with it. You know, there's loads you can do. Uh, one final thing, just, you know, as an extension, if you like, of that, if we select like an audio region, which is you know, the whole chunk here, and we can create all different audio regions by cutting it up, bearing in mind. So if we cut up that first chord, if we just take that first chord, I've selected it, and if I press Shift and Tab at the same time, we get this view here. And this is our waveform view. So if I select the whole thing, we can see all of that audio region now in this space. Or we can have a look at this space, and this is just our chord. So if I press play, you'll see how it plays. Yeah. And we can do all sorts of things here. So we can change a thing here. We, we can change this to complex, which is how the audio is being processed. And then we can change the pitch. So if we go up to three semitones, you'll hear it changes or down. And it, you can do all sorts. And that's the original again. Um, but just by warping, it's called. And we'll use warp later, maybe. And um, we'll see how we get on. Um, but that's a really quick introduction to how to get going. You need your ideas, you need to get your songwriting kind of going and just experimenting with everything all the time. Um, and then once you've started doing that, um, you can, you know, just start experimenting within Ableton, you know, get the microphone set up, experiment with different places, um, put the microphone in different positions different microphones for different instruments and then record and then layer things up you know use the click track and then maybe take the click track away and you record over stuff that's already there um, sometimes it's good if you play the bass and drums in if you're using those for your song or track to then record those to click track and then get everyone else to record to the bass and drums and get that kind of slightly different feel so you can adjust all of these methods to whatever it is you're making, but this is just the first step on our way. In the next video, we'll be looking at MIDI. What is MIDI? MIDI instruments, um, MIDI keyboards, using synths, um, how to kind of create synth sounds a little bit, um, and programming drums as well. And I'll hopefully be able to give you some good resources on all of those uh, in that video. So hopefully see you then and uh, happy music making.